Thank you everyone for joining. Really excited to have you here on a Monday evening. Um, my name is Shannon Bart. I am uh, on the sustainability team here at Netflix, leading our work to decarbonize productions globally. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to be with you here today. And Caroline. Yeah, hi all, great to meet you. Uh, my name is Caroline Winslow. I am a manager of clean energy technologies at Third Derivative, which is a program of RMI, formerly Rocky Mountain Institute. And I'll get a bit more uh, into detail in, in what my role is and what our organization is later in this call. Fantastic. All right. Um, okay, so first we're just gonna start off uh, sharing a little bit about our approach to sustainability here at Netflix and the role that clean mobile power plays in our strategy um, on our productions. So uh, here at Netflix, we do have a public climate target to cut our carbon footprint, our emissions in half by 2030. Um, that's compared to where they were in 2019. Um, and at Netflix, productions make up more than half of our company's carbon footprint. So figuring out how to to decarbonize productions and reduce the amount of fossil fuels that we burn on productions is really, really instrumental to um, us achieving our climate goal. Um, in addition to that, we do every year and we have since 2022, um, take the whole of our carbon footprint and um, invest in nature-based pro projects so that we can achieve that um, netting our emissions to zero. So those are two parts of our, our climate target. Um, so really when it comes to production, our number one priority and our vision is to phase out the use of fossil fuels on our production. On most productions, about 30% of fuel use is in generators, uh, or on average productions, about 30% is in generators and 70% in vehicles. So bringing in clean sources of power is really key to doing that. Um, and while this is our vision, we really can't do this without DPs and the crew and all the decision makers on the ground to really um, let us know what works and figure out what works for your productions and really embrace this new clean tech that's coming out for our productions. Um, so you can see here we have clean mobile power um, and we'll have to transition to electric vehicles. Both of those are often leveraging batteries, which is a way to bring renewable energy like electricity made from wind power and solar power and use that on our productions. Um, so just a little bit about generators. When we first started this work, we really dug into the generators we use now um, and, and so that we could understand our power requirements. And when we started monitoring generators, we learned that we really are making a lot more electricity than we need on set. So that purple circle is all the electricity we're making with our generators um, on our productions and on each of these productions the blue was the maximum the peak power ever needed at a single point in time and then the green circle was the average power used so what we know is that we're we have generators that are much larger than we need and then that is a very inefficient way to be making electricity from diesel fuel because you're making all this electricity that you don't use um, and these dollar numbers are in the us they would actually be a lot more expensive here in the uk in terms of efficiency um, another thing we learned is that not all generators are created equal. Um, there are different stages of generators and it really is um, about how efficient they run and how clean they are, um, the type of air pollution they're putting out. And so in the UK, what you really wanna look for are stage four and stage five generators because they are going to be the most fuel efficient and the cleanest when we are using diesel generators. So those are some interesting findings that we had early on. Um, every year we publish our progress in what is called an ESG report or an environmental social governance report. This is just a screen grab from the latest report. I'm not going to go into all this in super detail, but we are really charting our progress, bringing in batteries, hydrogen power units, and hybrid generators, all of which are a type of clean mobile power, um, as well as we are chatting about how we are phasing in electric vehicles into our productions, and of course, um, phasing towards charging those with clean power as well. So I wanna dive in a couple just um, UK-based examples. The Union is a film um, that actually just came out recently in August on Netflix. It was filmed uh, a bit ago now, 
but it um, used a mix of these 20K batteries and a lot of five smaller 5K batteries to the point that they only needed diesel generators for about 5% of the time for set power. So of the 290 hours they were filming on location around the city of London, they only turned on a set diesel generator for 15 hours. Um, and that really was at times when they powered most of their day by the batteries, but the sun was going down, they were losing the light, they had to bring out a couple 18Ks and then turn on the generator for a few hours. So it's really great to see that you still have that flexibility um, with having the generators there as a backup, but that it was not their main power source. Um, they shared a lot with us about how the batteries allowed them to be more agile, bring the power close to set, less cabling, and they were able to access neighborhoods that didn't allow diesel generators. They're able to film in neighborhoods that they normally might not have had access to. Um, Bridgerton uh, is now, um, through a couple of their seasons, have used hydrogen power unit, but this was the first time that they deployed the hydrogen power unit out on location. Um, hydrogen is really interesting. It's um, the green hydrogen is made from combining water with renewable electricity through an electrolysis process. And then when you put that into a fuel cell, the only byproduct is clean, drinkable water, which I have tasted and it's tastes just fine. Um, and so this was interesting. This power unit powered more of their unit base, their marquees, a lot of the um, areas around the set, not set directly itself. And then Supercell, um, which is also just out recently, um, use hybrid generators for its unit base. Actually, a lot of our productions are now using hybrid generators for their unit base. And that's where you pair a battery with a diesel generator. And what that does is it allows the diesel generator to run only at its most efficient um, power load and to recharge the battery, and then it shuts off. So you have a lot more quiet time um, and you are most fuel efficient with that diesel generator. And um, something that was fun about this one too is that it was the first production to use the Film London's grid project power cabinet that they installed at Victoria Park. And so they were able to access grid power while filming, filming in the park. And, um, and just a reminder that grid power, accessing available power is always the best and cleanest option. So um, that was really cool that they could do that too. Now I will um, hand it over to Caroline, who's going to chat a bit more about um, kind of the clean mold power technology um, and then into the clean mold power initiative. Yeah, great. Thanks, Shannon. Um, as Shannon noted, I'm going to get a little more into the nitty gritty of what of some of these solutions are um, and how to deploy them most efficiently. So what is the impact of a production and why are we so focused on this? Shannon teed it up that it is core to achieving Netflix's climate commitments. But overall, diesel generator usage currently accounts for 700,000 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent emissions every year. What does that mean? That's the same as driving about 1.8 billion miles in an average gas-powered passenger vehicle. So while the production is on the big screen, um, they, you know, they have significant uh, emissions impact. And so we're working to address that through these clean mobile power technologies and a few other avenues, as I'll get into in a moment. So where is most of the power utilized on a set? as you can see, or on a production. As you can see here, about a quarter respectively is both to power base camp as well as the set. A variety of other demands come from uh, what we classify here as additional. So this includes construction, locations department, things like that, and a smaller portion for equipment and catering. So there's a lot of opportunities throughout an entire set to really reassess how are these different uh, sources being powered. So the first step to making these clean mobile power solutions viable is to reduce your overall energy demand. So what we're talking about here is energy efficiency. This is a really key piece of the puzzle because obviously uh, the less you use, the better it is for the environment, but it also makes utilizing these new zero emission technologies much more viable. So what are we talking about from an efficiency standpoint? One, this is utilizing more efficient trailers. As you can see here on the left, some have solar panels on the roof, uh, better insulation within them, utilizing more efficient uh, lights. So for example, LED lights inside, 
um, much more efficient appliances, whether that's washers, dryers for costume, um, appliances for hair and makeup. HVAC is a big one, um, particularly heating and cooling, and if you're filming in environments that have more drastic temperature swings. Another opportunity is utilizing more efficient set power. So utilizing LED lights um, that, as we likely all know, is far more efficient um, than incandescent. And then finally, really rethinking how you utilize power from an operational perspective. So turning off HVAC systems when no one's in the trailer um, and not wasting power where it's not needed. Based on our analysis here at RMI, we found that just by deploying these easily accessible, already on the market techniques that I just mentioned, um, productions could reduce their overall emissions by up to 30%. So those are really low hanging fruit um, that are easy to start to roll out and can actually make the uh, folks working on a production much more comfortable. Um, these are not headaches by being implemented. Then we want to uh, replace the remaining energy demands with the two primary technologies that Shannon's mentioned. One are batteries or battery energy storage systems. And then secondly, hydrogen power units. So focusing on batteries, as a lot of you are probably familiar, batteries come in a variety of shapes and sizes, whether they're powering your phone or powering your EV. And similarly, there's a variety of sizes that can be utilized on a production, making them very robust um, and mobile. And they off also offer up to 100% carbon-free power if that means they're charged by renewables. So whether that's small solar or wind that might be on site or from a grid that's powered through a lot of renewables. As you can see here, um, and as maybe some of you have seen on productions, they come in a variety of shapes and sizes. So here you can see on the left, a two kilowatt hour unit, all the way to the right, a 250 kilowatt hour unit. There's also a lot of other benefits, as you can see on the left, you can easily pick up and carry your power around with you to power a specific camera or specific light, adding a lot of operational and mobility benefits there. <clears throat> Secondly, hydrogen power units um, are a really interesting technology. And as Shannon alluded to, there's a few different types of hydrogen. Um, there's some hydrogen called green, uh, blue, gray, what all of these different colors are referring to is how the hydrogen is produced. Um, all hydrogen power units can be run on these different colors of hydrogen, but by targeting and utilizing green hydrogen, that's when it's produced using renewable energy, that allows you to produce power with zero emissions. So a lot of these hydrogen power units that have been built for the industry are quite mobile, so they can either be moved via forklift or towed via a trailer, as you can see in those left two photos. And then from a, a refueling perspective, there's a lot of um, exciting opportunities as it can function quite similar to existing diesel refueling. So as you can see in that um, kind of third photo from the left, that is a company called Hone, that is their fuel block. So they're trailerizing their um, green hydrogen fuel that they've acquired to easily go around and refuel generators on a production. And then fourth, there's uh, that fourth image, there's a lot of really interesting, exciting, innovative solutions coming down the pipe. Uh, this is a company, Sesame Solar. And within this trailer, in addition to batteries um, on board, they have solar on the roof and actually an onboard electrolyzer. So they utilize that solar when it's sunny with no clouds to produce green hydrogen that then fuels a fuel cell that they have on board. So a lot of really exciting opportunities within the hydrogen power unit realm. And then thirdly, uh, on-site renewables. This is key from a recharging perspective. So in uh, production settings where you have a bit more space to set up portable solar arrays or even small wind, this can be really key in topping up um, batteries and different power solutions on site and can help to uh, extend runtime on a battery by 20 or 30 percent. And then finally, um, these are some bridge solutions and we classify them as bridge solutions because they're far better than 
business as usual using an oversized diesel generator. Um, however, they're not quite 100% zero emissions. Um, some of these alternatives or bridge solutions are utilizing renewable diesel, such as HVO within an existing generator. Another avenue is utilizing a diesel battery hybrid, as, as Shannon noted. So these are great um, steps to take in the interim, but the long-term goal is really leapfrogging into those clean mobile power solutions. And just as a reminder from an emissions reduction potential, why we're focused on those is these have the potential to be 100% carbon emissions free. Um, and whereas you see the bridge solutions are about on average, about 50% of emissions reduction potential compared to baseline. So that's why we're really excited about this. But not only can these clean mobile power solutions significantly reduce emissions, but there's also a variety of added operational benefits. So one is most of these solutions are extremely quiet, if not silent. So we've talked to folks that have been thrilled that they've been able to put a battery directly next to a camera and reduced any kind of post-production time to be editing out generator noise in the background or having to run long cable runs to a generator that might be a couple you know, hundred yards away. Uh, secondly, they also have no on-site emissions and pollutants. So for folks that are working day in, day out next to these generators, they're not inhaling harmful pollutants or toxins into their own lungs. And we've also talked to folks on productions um, that love that this doesn't impact local neighborhoods or surrounding residents, um, or even displace them based on noise or pollutants that have been uh, caused issues in the past. Um, and as I noted, a lot of them are very hyper mobile, so it can actually enhance kind of the operational flexibility on a production. So while there's these really exciting solutions in and of themselves, they can work together really, really seamlessly to create what I like to refer to as a mobile microgrid. So as a reminder, first and foremost, we should be reducing the amount of uh, energy required. So this is from an efficiency perspective. Here at RMI, we call it megawatts. So essentially no watts. Second line of defense, as Shannon noted, and you all in the UK are particularly well positioned with the grid project to be able to tap into grid accessed power wherever possible. Following that, we then can deploy these clean mobile power and bridge solutions that all can work together really seamlessly. So for example, as you can see here, on-site renewables provide a great opportunity to top up batteries, but green hydrogen fuel cells can also do that. So rather than taking a battery offsite to power via say the grid in a warehouse, you could pull up a um, battery right next to a fuel cell that's on a production, top up those smaller batteries, and then carry them off to where they need to be utilized. So these can all really work together in tandem and at different sizes to really meet the needs of a production based on its location or overall um, energy demand. And just a, a quick flag, as, as Shannon noted, Lead electrification and EVs are a key part of the puzzle as well, looking ahead. So factoring in considerations of how will these EVs be charged on a production, a lot of that can be done um, through these clean mobile power technologies, which has a lot of uh, added benefits. So now transitioning to talk about the clean mobile power initiative. Um, we are focused on this because we really want to identify how we can tailor clean mobile power solutions to really meet the specific needs of the film and TV industry and also make them much more readily, readily available for you all to utilize on your own productions. So in June of 2023, the Clean Mobile Power Initiative, or CMPI as we often refer to it, was launched to find, accelerate, and deploy these clean, reliable solutions with, for the entertainment industry as alternatives to diesel generators. Um, the initiative was launched, co-launched by Disney and Netflix with the support of Third Derivative and RMI. Caroline, do you mind if I pop in real quick? Please. I want to clarify because 
Um, since we've been using clean mobile power in so many of our productions, one might ask, why would you need to um, start this broader initiative? And I think what we are finding was, well, we there was technology out there that could meet most of the needs. Um, it wasn't perfect yet for our industry. So we have um, batteries that can meet a lot of needs, yet there wasn't a solution out there yet that can meet every power need, the really high power needs. Um, and at the same time, while hydrogen power was starting to come online, you saw they were in big shipping containers, which worked for some places, but it really wasn't as mobile as we were hoping for. So really, we thought we needed to work with a tech accelerator and tech incubator like Caroline over at Third Derivative and RMI um, in partnership with Disney, who has very similar goals to us on their productions, um, to really help identify the solutions of the future so that we really can get to a place where we don't need to have those diesel generators anymore. Yeah, thanks, Shannon. And to, to add to Shannon's point, for the Clean Mobile Power Initiative, we've really honed in on this large scale system um, in the mobile space that isn't quite, um, hasn't taken off quite as much as the handheld batteries as you see today. So we're really targeting from a battery perspective, the 300 kilowatt hour size, such that it can serve as a drop in replacement for most diesel generators used today. So that's really the sweet spot of size and capacity that we're looking at through this initiative. So in order to make these solutions tailored to your industry and much more readily available, there's three main action pillars of CMPI. So the first is demand signaling. It's indicating to the tech industries, to different clean tech manufacturers, that the entertainment industry is serious about decarbonizing and that you all are looking for solutions um, and calling upon those with them to approach your industry and create solutions for your needs. The second is training and education. So we recognize that some of these technologies might be very new to folks working on a production. So putting out uh, training guides and manuals and educational materials that can really allow for the safe and efficient uptake of these new power solutions. And then third is accelerate supply. So as Shannon noted, Netflix approached us as they felt like there weren't as many options as they wanted out in the market. So Third Derivative is a climate tech accelerator program, and we've been brought on board to run an 18-month program to really help scale a lot of startups with novel solutions um, to bring their technologies to market. Who's a part of this Clean Mobile Power Initiative? We're not doing it alone. It's really critical to be working with the wider industry and ecosystem in order to deliver on these three action pillars. So in addition to the steering committee that I've already noted, we've brought on three supplier partners. Uh, so Sunbelt Rentals, the MBS Group, and Kyoto by Sunset Studios, who really play a key role in helping to purchase, acquire these technologies and allow them for allow for them to be rented on productions. You see at the bottom here, accelerator participants. Um, as I noted, Third Derivative, we run a climate tech accelerator program as a part of the broader RMI organization that's focused on the energy transition at large. So we bring in companies and startups and really provide a variety of resources, whether that's financial, um, offtake agreements, mentorship, to help them build their businesses and thus their solutions. So in doing so, we put out a call for applications, a call for solutions to global manufacturers. And in November um, of 2023, we onboarded the top 10 companies that we felt had the best solutions and capabilities to design products for your industry. As you can see here, these are the 10 companies. Some you might be familiar with their names, others you might have never heard of. That's because they may be working in adjacent industries. For example, Ampt is about on 50% of construction sites throughout Hong Kong. So it's working with them to refocus their um, energy and um, pipeline towards really looking both at new markets and new industries. Within these 10 companies, seven of them have battery focused solutions. 
Uh, two of them have hydrogen power solutions, one of which also has the trailerized fuel block um, that was shown in an earlier slide. And then one, um, as I noted, Sesame Solar has that hybridized solution with both fuel cells, onboard hydrogen production, as well as battery and solar. So they come together with a variety of approaches, but a lot of really proven technologies. Um, so there's no basic science risk to these. Most of them are North America based. Um, a lot of that was driven due in part to the location specific nature of film and TV and where a lot of uh, those of us working on the initiative are based and have opportunities to really deploy these technologies. Um, but quite a few are based there in Europe, very close to you all. So the UK is a, is a key focus area for us. And then one that is Hong Kong based. This group also has a variety of different stages, which actually makes working with them very exciting and dynamic. Um, some are proven industry players that have been working in the power sector for 20 years, whereas others are really novel startups based in Silicon Valley that are taking really new and innovative approaches to their companies and their solutions. But all of them, um, or a majority of them, have had at least one commercial deployment as of the November 2023 onboarding, and all of those numbers have increased to date. Another thing to flag is there's a lot of other industries with temporary power needs like film and TV. So as I alluded to, some of these companies are already working in these adjacent sectors, and there's a lot of opportunities for knowledge sharing, best practices, and spillover potential for these solutions. So whether that's into other live events like music festivals and concerts, to EV charging that you all will be seeing more and more on your productions, as well as really other adjacent industries like military applications, disaster relief and response, uh, construction, backup power for telecommunications. So this is a growing demand globally and across a variety of different industries. I'll now hand it back to Shannon to chat about what this means for all of you as DPs. So, and, and Caroline, before I do that, I'm wondering, should we share a little bit about, so this technology isn't available on the market yet, the stuff going through the cohort. So it's, we're gonna be um, testing it soon in kind of controlled spaces and then deploying it on production pilots um, in the coming months. And then once we have figured out which ones are, are the best, um, and we expect a number of solutions to come out of the cohort, then that's when they'll start to become um, available to be purchased by suppliers, whether it be the suppliers in the cohort um, and otherwise. Exactly. Did, I, did I represent that accurately, Caroline? Definitely, yeah. And I guess to put a more fir firm temporal bound on that, our program um, at Third Derivative runs through May of 2025. So really in the next eight months is a bit of a sprint to, to test and deploy these products. So when we say they'll be available soon, we really hope that's in the coming year or two, um, not looking at a you know 10 year horizon. These are technologies that are here and hopefully you can start putting your hands on and utilizing um, in a, a few months or years. Great. So um, as I said early on, the, the DP, you all are so important. Um, you are your um, advocacy and influence um, and questions around this are really, really key to this transition uh, to clean power on set. And so here's some just some suggestions after this, I'll, we'll open it up to conversation. We'd love to hear from you all. But um, it really is helpful to start the conversation. Um, discuss with your producers, production designers, the locations, unit department, of course, your lighting department to really get aligned on, on potential goals. For example, a goal might be let's try to, you know, reduce our generator use. Maybe it's 50 percent. Maybe it's more. Um, maybe you want to find some locations where you don't need generators at set and um, to be running all day. So just kind of getting aligned on some of those goals. Um, if it's new for folks, which it is still new for a lot of people, really just um, remind everyone the benefits of it, right? So it has provided so much production agility and access to different cut locations, maybe even small enclosed places where you can't bring generators inside. Um, it reduces air and noise pollution, of course, and often we're starting to see how it improves um, the relationship and the locations department really likes that when, when working with local locations where you film. So some questions to think about, talking points for having this conversation. 
is, you know, first work with your lighting department. Um, are there ways that you can reduce the power needs for the set lighting? Every location you go to, is there electric grid power available that we can tap into? Maybe it's not for everything. Maybe it's just for a portion of the production. Um, maybe it's there just to recharge batteries and then you're lighting off the batteries. Um, what forms of clean mobile power are available for your production? Especially throughout the UK, there are so many options now from so many industry suppliers. So really do ask the question about that. Um, how can you leverage, leverage um, instead of having distributed power? So instead of having one central set generator, maybe um, you can use multiple batteries. Um, maybe there's smaller batteries paired with sunlight so you don't have to cable way over there. And then communicate your lighting plan um, and then ask for the production's power plan. How, how is that going to be powered? Let's make a plan. Often we just, I think the business as usual is to bring your biggest generator with you, have it throughout the time, turn it on, even though it's only running at a 2% load, um, which is uh, not only not efficient, but a generator is more likely to break down if it's running at such a low load. So really having that power plan to make sure that you can be most optimized in your needs. And then of course, when you, if you are using a diesel generator, um, request that they're stage four or stage five, those are gonna be the cleanest and healthiest to be around. Make sure it's the right size for the power needs. And of course, running on HBO fuel, which is widely available and now used in most of the generators in the UK, if you be sure to ask for it.